in the last segment, we talked a little bit about the importance in my mind of using keyboard shortcuts. Now let's take it up a notch. The things like pressing a single letter for a tool is good, but pressing a shortcut to instead of going to a menu, especially when you look under some menus and to get to certain things, there's like, you have to go to like sub menus and things like that. The, the possibility also exists for you to change the keyboard shortcuts. And that means either use an existing shortcut for some different function or try to apply a shortcut to a function that doesn't have one. And I word it that way because almost every possible combination is already spoken for somewhere. So the chances of you finding one that's unused is fairly unlikely. But what you can do is, again, this is one of those things where someone's job at Adobe was to say, I'm gonna allocate keyboard shortcuts to things. So right away, when I look under this menu as an example, see these three right here? I know personally, I will never in my lifetime use auto tone, auto contrast, or auto color. Because I don't like functions that say auto anything, because if it doesn't work, now what do I do? So I much prefer functions where I take control. So, and I'm not suggesting everyone should be like that, but I looked at this and went, I know I'll never use those. So to me, there are three keyboard shortcuts that I can use elsewhere. And if you start looking through, you can probably find things like um, vanishing point, kind of a cool filter, but I can't remember the last time I ever actually used it on a day-to-day -day basis. So there's another keyboard shortcut that I could use somewhere where it makes sense for me, okay? So there are two options. You either attempt to apply a shortcut to something and it'll tell you that it's being used by something, or look through first and make note to yourself, here are some shortcuts that I know I will probably never use and use those. So it works both ways. I'll show you what the idea is. So here's a perfect example. As we'll talk about in a little bit today, I live and breathe layer masks. To me, they're such an important part of my work. It kills me to think that every time I have to add a layer mask, I have to go click a button or go to pull down menu instead of pressing a shortcut. So one of the first things I did is, why don't I have a keyboard shortcut for add a layer mask? And in the past, I would have just spoken, you know, complained to myself and nothing would have happened. Now I have the option of going, well, let's see if we can make that happen. So I go to keyboard shortcuts, similar principle to allocating menus, but instead of just showing or hiding, this is allowing me to edit what the current keyboard shortcut is. So I'm just, I'm saying, go to keyboard shortcuts for my main menus. And you can see you can, here, you can allocate shortcuts for the, again, the main menus, the pop-up menus and panels, or the tools themselves, which we'll talk about in a second. So I just have to go through and go, okay, I wanna do layer mask. I go to the layer menu and I dig down and find eventually down here, layer mask. So I want a layer mask in here and now I have to think of a keyboard shortcut. Now I made mental note to myself that command shift L or control shift L is one of the ones that I knew I could use. But look, as I try to use it, it gives me this warning and says, wait, this is already in use by Autotone, and it will be deleted from Autotone if you accept this. And I'm like, you bet I'll accept that, because I know I'm never gonna use Autotone, personally, so why not reuse that shortcut? Now, this is the personal part, because if you're a huge fan of Autotone, don't do this. But I haven't met too many people yet that are, so this is just one example, and you can, I think I found probably, I wanna say 10 or 11, shortcuts that are currently being used for other things that I just think I'll never use that so that gives me the ability to use them for myself. So what you do is you enter in, you physically press the keyboard shortcut you would like to use for whatever function. If you get, and I think it'd be unlikely you wouldn't get this message because like I said, almost every shortcut combination you can imagine has already been used. So in this case, it's warning me. Now if it came up and said, this shortcut is being used by levels, you know, because I have to, I do use that but the key is if it comes up and says it's something you never use anyway, then I just click accept. Okay, that's it. Now, this I think is really cool. Instantly, it shows you, see the little shortcuts already appeared there. I just did it and it's already in the menu. So now if I'm working away and I want a layer mask, I just press the shortcut, done. So much faster than going over and clicking on the little button at the bottom of the layers panel. And that's just one example. If you start thinking, I use this function, there's no shortcut. I use this, there's no shortcut for that. And I'm, again, not talking about every single thing you do, but there's probably a core of functions that you think, yeah, I, I do that a lot. 
So why not make a shortcut that makes sense to me? Instead of trying to remember some combination that was chosen by somebody, make it your own. Now, you do have to use a bit of caution, not, I would say, change, you know, every single shortcut, because some of them, there's a reason why, you know, it makes sense to have a certain shortcut for certain things. But like we saw with the menus, this is not permanent. This means until I tell it otherwise, this is my new shortcut. If we ever decide that maybe someone else uses my machine and they want to use Autotone, then I can put it back to the default of Autotone again. So it's your choice. I saw when you were, you were adding that shortcut that there was a summarize button down there. Is that something that gives you a list of all the yes, shortcuts? Yes, it does. It, it's, it does, although it's interesting because what it does, it actually creates an HTML file of all your shortcuts, which you can still print, but it's almost formatted as if you wanted to view it in a web browser for reasons known only to Adobe. But so if you do, especially if you do customize and you're trying to remind yourself, it, it's a fairly long thing because it shows you not just the ones you've created, but everything, but it will allow you to summarize. You can also save a set of keyboard shortcuts. So if you're going to work somewhere else and not bringing your machine, you could bring a thumb drive and say, I have with me my customization because I have my shortcuts or my menus or whatever. So you can kind of load those in. What's happening in this case for now You'll see it says Photoshop defaults brackets modified. So I haven't saved anything. If I wanted to, if I changed a whole bunch of shortcuts, I could press this little button and then it would save an actual set. 